there's an interesting component where it's like also the hard part, right? And maybe you deal with this where it's, you know what the human is capable of. You know what you're specifically what you're capable of in a lot of different ways. Not only is it just in a physical setting, but it's also in a, a mental. I mean, there's a real mental toughness that you have to find. Like you lose yourself to find yourself. You've done that. And so what happens is for me, the hard part is I want everybody to do that. Right. Part of this podcast and inspiring entrepreneurship through truth is I want everyone to go explore what they're meant to do. And I put that responsibility on everyone, probably unfairly, but I do that. I've done it to Nick a million times. And so it's this thing of like, it's hard, right? Like for you, is that, is that something you deal with? Well, you know, it's funny. You bring up something where I say, does everybody want to explore their potential? Does everyone want to, you know, open their eyes and figure out what life is all about and what their life is all about? I'm not sure. My, my buddy, Bonnie, who Nick is a UConn graduate, so I, you know, I've got to throw that in there. What? Fellow she, alumni. She's a Husky. She's yeah. a Husky. I'd say Bonnie, honestly, and it doesn't mean, I mean, she was by my side as the head handler, the head of the Cuban expedition through all these things. She was very focused and she was the number five racquetball player in the world for a long time. So I can't say she Mm, hasn't been somewhat driven and and chosen things and worked at them. On the other hand, day to day, whereas I wake up just in a, in a froth every day, I just wake up, I play my bugle, I play Reveille, like get up, go chase the tail of the tiger you know bonnie wakes up with peace and love like go out smell the flowers take her dog for a sweet little stroll she doesn't think that her life is all about becoming everything she can be you know she she has more peace to her than that and i'm attracted to people who are not necessarily chasing that dream but what i am glad to 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 service if i can is people who want to chase that dream they feel they've got passion and they've got discipline, but they, they're not even sure what, what dream to chase. A lot of young people say that to me, you know, kids who are just out of college and whatnot, they hear me speak somewhere and say, I've got that kind of fire, I do. I, I would throw myself, but I don't even know what to throw myself at. And I try to use that old Goethe sort of, uh, you know, phrase of there's magic in beginning things. You don't have to know every step you're gonna take, but rather than sitting still, take a step somewhere. Maybe it's the wrong thing. Maybe you start some PhD and you figure after a while, it's not for me. And there's no shame in dropping it, dropping back, but at least you've gotten your momentum going somewhere. You'll, that will lead you to taking another step, another step, and you know, two years later, you're gonna be saying, I came on it just because I tried. I tried this and this and this. You know what means the world to me is springboarding from what you said in the beginning, Diego, and that is that I didn't, swim across that ocean to inspire other people, but we all work on multiple levels at one time. And there was even the Cuban-American connection. I got to go to Cuba with President Obama in his entourage in 2014 because I was an emblem of someone who went off one shore and touched the other shore. Couldn't we come back together? So there were were a, a number of things happening during that swim besides the actual swim. But what means the world to me is when I do finish a talk or people write me, you know, maybe a fan letter type of thing, and they, they, they have nothing to do with swimming. They have nothing to do with sports at all. Can't relate to it, aren't involved in it, but they've been through cancer or they've been raising a, a, a disabled child or they've just been in a difficult life situation. Somebody's been in prison for a long time and they're out and they're, they're free, but they don't know where, where they're going. They're lost. So when people write me and say, you know, just just the nuggets of your story, and I, I'm not a proselytizer. I'm just, you know, Tony Robbins has made a lot of money. Maybe I should have gone in that direction, but um, I don't. I don't stand up and say, now here's the way to li- live a winning life. You know, number one, you do this, number two, you do this, and number three, and then whoop, you're there. So uh, I just tell my own story in a, in a kind of organic way, and uh, hopefully that, you know, has tendrils that go out, but it sounds like a sports swimming story, but in the end, it really has to do with with dreaming big and failing, 
you know, the courage to fail. Yeah. If you shoot the bar high, you might not make it there, but on your way there, that journey, you discover everything you are. And maybe you will make it there one day if you just don't quit. So that, there's another part of it that people, there were thousands of people on that beach at the end. 25 million people followed the final swim across. And you know what? They weren't sports fans. Very few wrote me and said, oh, yes, I followed the other swimmers who tried this before. And no idea. But what they wanted to witness was a an individual and a team who refused to give up. Every time we failed, almost died one time, yeah. no hyperbole, we didn't say never doing that again, never going back there, dangerous. We got the next level of the learning curve, the science, the technology, how to tap the human spirit maybe better the next time. And all of those precepts, you know, you fail, you get back up, but you don't just go in the ring with the same knowledge you had before, you gotta up your game. And when you go in the next time, you might fail again. Then you up your game again, and eventually, you get there. So that's the story, and it's the real story that I lived out loud, and I like to think I live it out loud every day now. That swim, honestly, in my 60s was meant not to break that record, that was, that's nice, but you know, I don't care if somebody else breaks it now. Maybe I do a little, I'll probably yeah, follow that. Say, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but that swim, I did to wake myself up, to say to myself, am I living the largest life I can every day? I'm not. I've kind of receded back into a, just take it as it comes. But I knew that that swim, because I know that swim, is the toughest swim in the world. The best have been trying since 1950. Men, women, young, strong, fast. Nobody's ever made it for a lot of good reasons reasons. That swim woke me up to putting myself into my life every day. So I'm retired now, again, and uh, I'm not going to do ocean swims. I could look at the four-fifths of the globe as blue, and uh, I could say, well, I could, you could swim there or there or there, a thousand million places you could swim. I just want to live that same life of never give up, dream big, have the courage to fail, you know, be awake and alert every minute of every day. I, that's the life, and that Cuba swim woke me back up to that. That's what it was all about. <laughs>